Hello and welcome to Bias Exam Prep IAS. As part of a comprehensive analysis, today we'll be discussing six important topics out of the Hindu newspaper daily edition. But before we begin, an important announcement for you. Based on popular demand, we have extended the 60% scholarship we are giving without any examination generally, up to 50% guaranteed discount on any of our courses, be it online and offline. You have an opportunity till 12th of June. We have extended it because there was a lot of demand because it was till 31st of May. Now it has been extended till 12th of June. So do be part of this program and become part of our family. Now with this, good morning to all of you. And we have to discuss six very interesting articles related to railways because railways has been the focus. And other than that, certain hydropower projects and disputes related to river water sharing. So we'll first discuss the covered system, a very interesting, very specific article, which is only specific to the Delhi edition of the Hindu newspaper. Thereafter, why does North Korea ne need spy satellites and its failed launch recently? Thereafter, we'll go into the prelims bite section and discuss Arunachal scrapping a lot of its hydropower projects. Further, Himachal Pradesh and Punjab, a major dispute is going to come by March of next year. Then. Railways, one issue we will discuss under Kavach, the other is related to couplings and how there was a recent incident in March itself when the bogies got detached from the locomotive itself. And last but not the least, again a special for Delhi edition, a very interesting word for science and therefore something important for your prelims examination generally. So, good morning to all of you and now we can enter today's discussion. And the most important discussion we do is a very important word which has been in the news, which is called the covered system. So you must be aware, you have to be aware of the recent train accident which happened in Uisa in the Balasor district, specifically at the Bahanaga uh, Bazaar station itself. Now, the death toll is quite big, one of the worst train accidents in Indian history. Close to 288 people are dead, 900 injured. And this train incident has brought into focus a lot of things. Our thoughts and prayers are with everybody who has got affected by this train incident itself. But it has brought into focus the concept of railway safety and a very specific program, a very specific system, which is called Kavach. Now, before I talk about Kavach and we'll discuss each and every aspect related to Kavach, very important for the examination now, main specifically GS paper 3, let's try to understand what happened in this incident because we have new information coming every day. So, now what we know of this incident is that at the Bahanaga Bazaar railway station, there's a very important four track route. So, there are basically four tracks which are there. And I'm trying to just recreate the whole incident for you so that you understand that Kavach in a way would not have worked in this context. And out of these four tracks, two are basically loops in the sense that this track comes and meets it here and this track comes and meets it here. And basically there are two main tracks which go towards the Havra and the UP sector, towards West Bengal and the UP sector. And basically the main tracks are this one. This is the main track. So the loop is basically used to clear the track if some train has to go or super fast train, for example, the two trains which are involved are technically super fast trains, 128 kilometers per hour, the incident happened. So therefore, very systematically, the government of India and railways have increased the speed in this sector. But the loop was used basically to take off trains so that the super fast trains, for example, Rajdhani and these trains could go quickly through this very small station, but an important station that way. Now, what we know of, of the incident is that there were four trains involved. There is basically one set of what are called goods train, Malgadi, which was stationed here, which had coal in it. There was one Malgadi which was stationed here, which had iron ore in it. And iron ore is very heavy, which makes that very, very heavy good strain and that way if the impact is there with an iron ore malgadi or train it becomes extremely detrimental for the second train because iron ore is very very heavy that way so there are two trains which are stationary because they needed to clear the track for two very important trains which were going now what we know of is that there is one super fast train which was going towards the west bengal sector and one going towards the up sector and what happens is that the train which comes from here, which is the Shalimar Express itself, this was given a green signal. And once it was given a green signal, 
it means that this interlocking this is called interlocking because the, the track remains like this and it changes to this to add to the loop itself this is called interlocking station now what we believe is that you only get a green when the interlocking is straight so that the train can go straight this way how what happened is that it is believed that the interlocking was not straight but was towards the malgadi or towards the goods train itself and a green signal was given to the loco pilot as the driver of the train itself and as soon as he crossed the signal it became from green to red basically the signal should have been red but was green so at the speed of 128 kilometers per hour which is quite a lot for indian railways itself the loco pilot reaches this interlock and he realizes that as soon as he reaches the interlock rather than the train going straight it goes right and therefore it goes in right and basically left for our example and it goes into the malgad itself it goes into the train itself and this in turn derails the fast train but what is the coincidence here is that there is also one more train which was at the same time going on the other track this side and what happens is that once the first train the shalimar express hits the uh, malgadi or the uh, the goods train first four bogies are derailed and they hit the yashwantpur train going towards bangalore that train the last three bogies so therefore four trains were involved two express trains were derailed together the first four of the of the shalimar express and the other one related to the the yashwantpur one and now what it actually talks about and the two trains i'll give you the names so that you basically know the names generally you have the yashwantpur havda express and the shalimar chennai koromandal express this was the first train which was involved this was the second train which was involved this one was the one which hit first and then got derailed and the last three bogies of the yashwantpur havda was now effected so basically seven to eight bogies were mangled together and that was the impact has been quite big now the point is why am i telling you this i am telling you this because a lot of people are now talking about how kavach would have saved this whole issue or kavach would have changed the concept or would have avoided this incident now if we talk about the basic incident and when i'll tell you what is kavach generally you will realize that kavach would have not worked here because the initial signaling was green and thereafter it was turned red and thereafter if a train driver comes to an interlock and once the train changes track he is just a passenger so a loco pilot cannot and a train which is at 128 km per hour both this was close to 90 km per hour which is the the uh, yashwantpur train and the shalimar which was 128 km per hour it is very very clear that even if they braked it would take 2 to 3 km to stop such a long train with such a speed so one thing is very very clear that as soon as the train came and the interlock was not straight but was towards the right there was no in a, there was no way the loco pilot could have stopped the train the train very quickly went towards the right hit the malgadi and thereafter the uh, the first four went towards the other train and together seven to eight bogies were totally mangled together so even if kavach was there auto braking would have been there braking would have not worked so therefore this is not an issue of kavach if kavach would have been there also it would not have worked it's rather and what we know of is that basically it's a signaling issue or related to interlocking somebody had given green then turned it to red and this interlock was changed and that is the basic point there's an inquiry as of right now we will see how it goes out now we know what is the basic situation i hope you understand the whole situation because people are technically criticizing but it would not have prevented this this was a signaling issue so is the basic incident clear to you because then i go into the kavach system okay now what is kavach kavach basically is a name for an automatic train protection system and we'll go into the nitty gritty later we'll talk about the atp system first which is kavach itself i have all the details with me i'll give you a very simple demonstration of how it actually works now very simply in kavach what happens is you have a station for example you have two stations and you have a track 
You have one track here and the other track there. Now under Kavach what happens is that the train has a system of Kavach. So for example, if there's a train, it has a Kavach system on it. And there's another train which has a Kavach system on it. The stations also need to have what are called Kavach systems hub in that regard. Now what Kavach basically does is that it has four or five very standard features. First is live tracking. Because of satellite technology itself, because of satellite technology itself, the trains can be tracked. Where are they? So Kavach gives you live monitoring of systems and RF IDs are used. Basically tracks have small IDs on them and the train itself has an RF reader. So whenever they go over a specific thing, whenever they go over a specific RF ID, the signal is sent to the station that the train has crossed this track. So it gives you live monitoring. Other than that, the best thing about Kavach is that there are two dashboards. One dashboard is with the loco pilot and the other dashboard is with the station master. Firstly, the speed of the train can be monitored that if the speed is too low or too high or is it following the speed it has been prescribed to. So the station master said that between A and B, there has to be the speed of 80 kilometers per hour. But if the loco pilot is much faster, the Covered system is an automated system. It will automatically lower the speed itself. So first is live tracking and live monitoring of speed. Then the most important thing which Kavach has, which could have helped in the system, but the initial signal was green itself, is that rather if there is fog or if it is extreme, extreme cold or there is some issue in visibility, what the covered system does is it reads the signal for the driver and it gives a signal in the dashboard or in the engine room of the train. So if the signal is red, it will show red in his dashboard. So for example, in fog, you can't see far away. So it can read the signaling and can give you the signal even before they read the signal post itself. This was what was said that if the cover system would have been there, the signal would have been picked up that it was not green but red, but we believe it was first green and then turned red. So the, uh, the even covers would have read it green only. Now, for example, the loco pilot did not give heed to the fact that it was a red signal. Now, red was given here and the loco pilot is still going. He has not braked. So what Kavach does is it slows down the train automatically. It is an automatic train protection system. It if the driver is going to ignore the red signal, the train will automatically come to a halt because the covered system was given a red signal from the hub and it picked up a red signal on the track and the loco pilot did not stop the acceleration. So it automatically can break for the train itself. This is the first important feature which is red signals are ignored and that mostly leads to what we call as collisions. So collisions can be avoided. It's an anti-collision system wherein red signals if ignored can be avoided because the train will automatically stop. Now the second most important thing which was being touted as something which could have stopped this calamity is that if this train, there's one train which is going towards this uh, towards the east and one coming from the west and both have covered systems for example what happens is these covered systems can communicate to each other so if they are very quickly going towards each other this covered system will communicate with this covered that we are on the same track and moving towards each other and they will automatically break both the trains and bring them to a halt 400 meters from each other so it is an anti-collision system because it can move towards each other. So therefore, if it is moving towards each other, both will break and very simply, very simply, the collision will be avoided. So first is it breaks automatically when you ignore the red, red light or red signal. And it also breaks if you have two trains moving towards each other in the same track itself. Now, it was also the sixth or seventh feature, which is basically if, when you cross a level crossing and there's fog you can't see. So it automatically uses the whistle when there is a level crossing. So the level crossing will also have a Kavach RFID. It will automatically whistle. So it's basically an AI type system in which it controls the train if the loco pilot is not or the locomotive pilot is not very, very attentive. 
So very simply, you have first auto braking on red signal, second which is based on anti-collision which is moving towards each other, then whistling on level crossings and crossings which need that in low visibility environment and train monitoring from the stations and therefore everything can be dictated to the system itself. Now Kavach also has an SOS system in the sense that somehow there has been no communication between the station and the train itself. So the local pilot can send certain messages to the station master that the train has something has happened or something very specific. Now, very simply, this is a very revolutionary technology, very, very cheap, but very, very effective in Indian environment. And in South Central Railways, it has been very beautifully applied. Now, as of right now, what we believe is that this is the future and government of India should push for it. But if we understand what happened in Odisha, you would get to know two very simple things that Kavach would not have worked because first the signal was green and then turned red and second was that the interlocking had to be straight because according to Kavach the track was clear. Kavach cannot see interlockings. Kavach cannot see and you would have seen it for sure in your life how tracks are interlocked with each other. This is called an interlocking where either the train can go straight or the train can go left or right. These interlockings can only be done through signaling. This was not correct. This is the basic point. This was not correct. Therefore, there was no chance to anybody to do anything in this. So it has been said by the railway board itself that the local pilot is very seriously injured. But he has given the basic statements that it was green. It turned red later. I had not seen it. Second, it happened so quickly that the train took a sharp right towards the, the Malgadi, I could not have braked and very simply it's a signaling issue rather than Kavach issue or related to a local pilot sleeping on the job. So are we clear with regards to basic concept of Kavach because then I'll add more details to it. Kavach anti-collision, braking automatically, the monitoring, whistling, SOS system. Five things we've discussed here. Does this make sense? It does. Perfect. So now let's go into the nitty gritty of the system. So Kavach, please remember this word now, is an automatic train protection system developed by Research Design and Standards Organization in India for specifically Indian Railways itself. It is a state of an art electric system and very simply it is comparable to the European standards of safety integrated level 4 which is quite high. In Europe, mostly it is safety integrated level 2. We use 4 in that way. Now, the first thing is it is meant to protect and prevent and protect trains by making sure that the train does not pass once the red signal is there to avoid collision. It activates trains, the trains braking automatically if the driver fails to control the train as per the basic speed which is, has been prescribed. Further, if two locomotives are equipped with Kavach, they can stop and basically they, it is an anti-collision, head-on collision can be avoided. It has SOS symbol monitoring. Further, it is one of the cheapest and the probability, the error probability is very, 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 very good, which is 1 is to 10,000 years. So in, in 10,000 years, one error will come. So if you go to the railway website, you get this basic thing which is equally important for us. So what are the features? Let's repeat them. Kavach controls train speed by automatic application of brakes if loco pilot fails to do it. Repeated line side signals are given in the loco dashboard in foggy and bad weather. So if it shows red on the track, it will show red in the loco pilot itself. Further, works on the principle of continuous update of movement. So very simply, it gives you the exact uh, what we call as location of the train itself. Auto whistling at what we call as different level crossings itself. Collision avoidance with loco to loco communication, which is locomotive, which is train to train communication and has SOS feature if a mishap happens. Now, what has been in the news quite a lot is TCAS, which is the traffic collision avoidance system. This was the one which was saying that if it was had been there, it would not have happened. 
this equipment what it does is that there's one equipment in the locomotive other one at the station and RFIDs which is radio frequency identification tags RFIDs are placed on the track itself which allows for two-way communication the panel inside the cabin helps the loco pilot about the signal in advance without visual signaling so from one to two kilometers away it will automatically show what is the signal in the next one kilometer and if permissible speed is not there or is not maintained it will automatically slow the train down and hooter activates which is the whistle activates automatically when crossing a level crossing what are the basic components of a kavach there are two basic components one is on the station side one is onboard equipment so at the station you need a station kavach unit which basically monitors and checks the movement then you need to put these RFIDs which are still used because RFIDs are used for signaling most probably there would have been an RFID dysfunction or deliberately somebody changed it we don't know we are looking into it very simply these RFIDs activate the different readers which are on the train itself and you need the radio frequency towers itself on the train you have a unit which has an RFID tag plus speed sensors and gyro sensors then it has a dashboard which shows you the speed and signal and a RFID reader so when the train goes over the track the reader reads the RFID which is on the track itself gives you live location so there are basic equipment on the train basic equipment on the on the station and on the tracks itself now the two trains which were involved unfortunately did not have coverage neither did Shalimar Chennai Koromandal Express have it neither did Yashwantpur Havada Express have it more than that the Havada Kharagpur Chennai line does not have coverage on the track side also this was a major lapse it is believed that the only proper zone of railways which has coverage is pioneered by the South Central Railways which has close to 1465 kilometers on which everything is under coverage and 77 locomotives and 135 stations till March have coverage so this is the best covered now you will say why don't why didn't we apply it it's very easy to blame so it was why didn't we apply it the point is that there's a priority list in which coverage is applied the simple point of the matter is first it is being done in high density routes for example Delhi Mumbai Delhi Havada this is a high density route because trains are very close to each other on this section so there is implementation on high density routes first and then on highly used networks in which the Havada Kharagpur Chennai line comes through now very simply very simply this is an incident which could have been avoided we don't know if there was malified intention before we move to the next topic it is unfortunate it is extremely saddening that way we know that this is the future we know that this should have been there now the basic point is what do you do with this information first is how do you need to know what is coverage second you need to know its salient features and third you need to know how is it applied as per railway see railways is implementing it but there's a priority list first on high density then highly used and then to other places where you have remote lines in that regard now for you and me it is it pains it hurts that something like this happens in 2023 when we have the technology available looking at the basic data which is coming through and one of the lines have been restored last night itself it is unfortunate that this section did not have coverage but looking at the basic data as of right now prima facie it seems that coverage would have not done anything also we need to see who is responsible for this politicizing this issue will not take us anywhere the opposition can say anything the point is can we learn from this I know a lot of people have died 300 people dead 900 injured is a very big calamity the point is that if we don't learn from this then they have lost their life in vain so Kavach should be and needs to be pushed on all zones. The government of India has it. The has the capacity. Railways has the capacity. 
But more than that, we now need to also shift our focus to signaling. Because if we have signals officers, and if interlockings can be so dangerous, then we need something for signal monitoring also. Because as of right now, what it turns out, it was a signaling error, wherein the train should have been stopped and the interlock should have been changed. Somebody without changing the interlock gave a green signal. Once the train, once the, as it is, you can be a passenger and see that it is red. But once the locomotive pilot has seen green, doesn't matter whatever you do behind him. So, unfortunately, this is the case in 2023, avoidable. But for you, Kavach is important. Automotive train protection system is important. We need to learn from this. The government of India needs to learn from this. We need to move forward. But everybody who lost their life or is now battling for their life and we pray for their, their families and for their health, we need to make sure that if they have been martyred, they have been killed, it does not go in vain. So very simply, very simply, the first topic, unfortunately, is about Kavach. We should not have been discussing it. Odisha has seen previously also very dangerous accidents. This is in the history of our railways, one of the deadliest in that regard. Things move on. We will also stop thinking about this incident. But the government of India needs to take certain steps. It needs to take certain steps because this should not happen in the modern world where you and me can share our live tracking status on our phones. So if it, it is expensive, it is worth it. And now railway safety. To nowadays in cars, we are now seeing a new thing which Tata Motors has introduced this concept of safety. We now need to invest in safety. Just moving people. In one train, there were 1,127 people. The other train, there were close to 900 people. 2,000 people have been affected by this incident. And it is not a joke. And nobody should take it as a joke. And specifically, politicizing this issue, asking for this and that, makes no sense. Somebody resigns, that is not the point. Who lost their people, the, the loved ones in this, they get nothing out of resignations. But what can be done and what can be avoided is that we need to make sure this is the last major event in our history of railways in that regard. So, I hope Kavach is clear, the incident is clear and the lesson is clear here. Because safety is not a joke and we tend to not talk about signaling even 1%. For you, this is a question. Which is, what is Kavach? I have a question in the end also. But for us who use public transportation, who use Indian Railways, we trust the Indian Railways. And the trust in the Indian Railways should not go away. Blaming the colonial government, blaming the British makes no sense. 75 years. Things can change. And on such a heavy line, makes no sense. So Kavach should be put in. Anything better than that, should also be put into it. If we need to bring in technology from Europe, we should do it. And you and me are the ones who need to make sure that we don't forget this incident as just a current affairs event, but something which impacts you and me both. Because we could also be, have been in the train which do both of them got derailed. On this note, I'll shift to North Korea if everybody is clear about what we have discussed Till this point. We are clear? Kavach. Kavach main components. Then we will talk about North Korea. Yes? Fully clear. Perfect. You know, don't need to read the history of Indian Railways. We, you see, not that now you just read Indian Railways. Kavach is a word which you can see somewhere in the examination for sure now. As a very simple question or a very straightforward question. Both in mains and prelims in that sense. Now we go to North Korea. And North Korea recently tried to launch a spy satellite. I'll give you the names later. The point is, what is the implication? So they launched a spy satellite through their launchers. 
दे बेसिकली हैव वॉटर कॉल्ड आईसीबीएम्स इंटरकॉन्टिनेंटल बैलिस्टिक मिसाइल्स सो दे मॉडिफाइड द इंटरकॉन्टिनेंटल बैलिस्टिक मिसाइल इन सच अ वे दैट इट कुड बी यूज एज अ सैटेलाइट लॉन्च व्हीकल that that has its own problems also and that is why 10 minutes into the launch north korea had to abort the mission the satellite has been lost uh, has been lost generally and it became too instable at very high speed now the point is this is not a joke because icbms with north korea a nuclear power as it is a danger for america and for the whole of east asia generally but now putting in satellites which are not monitored by the nasa or generally all the different important organizations such as isro is dangerous for this sector this has the power and the capability to destabilize east asia very quickly there was missile launch warning in japan in south korea in china and therefore north korea as of right now is pushing quite a lot for space technology now this is not that north korea is doing it out of non provocation or in isolation there is provocation in the sense that south korea recently became part of the us space force there was a nuri rocket which was launched there is a satellite which has been given dedicated to south korea's defense system so north korea is doing it out of retaliation against what we see in the context of the south korean launches and their own defense technology now the launch vehicle which they used was a modified one of their biggest icbm they've launched previously also six attempts they've launched one satellite five attempts did not work but the point is not that north korea is launching satellites it's about this is a very dangerous trend which militarizes the space technology and in that context this article becomes important because it gives you a new dimension to a already fragile geopolitics of asia so the basic point is icbms have been modified to make them launch vehicles there are different names which are there but the most important point is implication the implication is that now north korea is going to do it there are a lot of sanctions but we all know that pakistan and china provide everything to north korea pakistan gets its nuclear technology from north korea itself and pakistan in turn gives them grains and food and china shares the basic what we call as technology and it's all chinese technology which they've used in their rockets so it's not that everybody does not know where the things are coming from but sanctions and economic sanctions which already we saw vis-a-vis -vis russia are useless north korea proved it it is even more useless so very simply very simply icbms and the implication of this launch is important for your preparation and generally for international relations gs paper 3 and 2 both it is important so on 31st may north korea launched a new type of rocket which is called the cholima 1 and the satellite went for 10 minutes into the air thereafter it crashed into the yellow sea and it is believed that it was instability in the rocket's engine and fuel system which led to them bringing it down now this doesn't mean that north korea does not have a space program it does have a state space program under which it has satellite launch vehicles long range which have been now changed into from icbms into satellite launch vehicles in that regard from 1998 itself north korea has put its first satellite in orbit in 2012 after failed attempts six attempts were there and previously they used to use a very specific type of icbm which they had modified which is called the unha 3 so the taipei dong 2 which was icbm was modified to make it unha 3 don't have to learn the names but a simple point of the matter is the unha type launcher was used in 2016 also and very simply they were using this unha which is a smaller rocket but was based on taipei dong 2 so they are changing their icbms intercontinental ballistic missiles into launch vehicles but this launch was interesting because they changed their launcher they changed their launcher because it was the hwasong 15 icbm which has been now named as chomila one and uh, engine is very similar why it actually did not work is because dual nozzle liquid 
fuel was there and liquid fuel at very high speed becomes very instable that is why even in our PSLV it is solid liquid solid so at one place you need a solid fuel they had only liquid fuel that is why it became very very instable at one point of time now what is the purpose what is the purpose the purpose is that it plays a crucial role in providing North Korea surveillance technology and improves its ability to strike when it comes to defense technology. Now, one would say that they are doing it without provocation because they want to do it. No, there is provocation and that provocation is coming from the US and South Korea. First is that the US Space Force Korea has now been operationalized. It gives advanced capability of missile warning and satellite communications to South Korea. Further, a Nuri rocket was launched recently designed for by Seoul for space-based surveillance. So South Korea is doing it, so North Korea will automatically do it. Now, for you and me, the Chomila and these names are of no purpose to us. What is more important is overall picture. The overall picture is that now Pyongyang is not holding back. It is very, very clear in what it wants to do. Further, the UN Security Council resolution will has a lot of implications on this launch. There will be economic sanctions. But one thing is very, very clear that North Korea doesn't care about its economic sanctions generally. So for you, for GS Paper 3, what is important is the instability of an ICBM to become a satellite launch vehicle. For IR is the implication for East Asia and South Asia and Asia generally. Because with more and more spy satellites in to the orbit, it becomes problem for national security of most of these countries. So here it's not as complicated, but very straightforward in that regard. And before I go to prelims by its itself, let's try to summarize what we've done till this point. The first discussion was very specific to the discussion on Kavach, has been in the news quite a lot, basic criticism, a lot of things have been in the news with regards to it. Anti-collision, monitoring, live signaling, the concept of auto whistling, SOS, and generally anti-collision on the same track itself has different components. But the basic point is this technology has been there for now close to six to seven years. So it's not that it's very new and we need to test it. It has been tested and is very extensively used in South Central Zone itself. Now the basic point of the matter is we as Indians have to now make sure that railway safety becomes a priority of the government of India because this is not acceptable. One thing is very, very clear, it is not acceptable. 300 people dead because of signaling error and interlocking with lakhs and crores of people using Indian railways while trusting it and one train having close to 1000 people. These small errors can be very disastrous as we saw. And what if it was not Malgadis, it was not the goods train and it was actually other express train. So an express train going in the back of an express train with one more express train, three express trains could have been involved and it would have been very, very disastrous. So we need to make sure that this becomes a priority for you and me, for the government of India. Covered system is generally clear to you. Second is the implication of North Korea trying to launch satellites wherein it destabilizes the uh, East Asian sector itself and very specifically South Korea is provoking by introducing new technologies. US is proactively giving satellite technologies to South Korea. So therefore North Korea is retaliating in that regard. Thereafter, now I think everything is clear with regards to the two big topics which we need to discuss. Can I move to prelims by its section? Small topics, things are important. I'll just mark them for you what you need to remember generally. Are we clear with regards to this? Okay. A lot of you are discussing that you are part of Delhi University. Okay. I have previously taught in some of the colleges which you have referred to. Hindu, Ramjas, uh, Lakshmi Bhai, Kamla Nehru. Separate issue altogether. You are not concentrating here but you are discussing your colleges. That's a separate issue altogether. But okay. Let's talk about prelims rights. Six years I have taught in Delhi University. Okay. Now, the first topic is Arunachal and scrapping of close to 44 different Heidel projects which were given to private players. Now, generally it is not important to you. 
because of the fact that you don't need to know the 44 projects, but it shows a very important tendency. And it, what it actually shows is that the, what is common to all these 44 projects was all were allocated to the private players. So now most probably they are, they are going to be given to central PSUs. All of them were allocated to private players and they did not do anything for close to two to three years. Several notices were given by, by the Arunachal government to these 44 allocated projects. Private developers were given these projects, but they did not show any interest. This very simply shows you the limitations of private based what we call as renewable energy projects or generally projects which don't generate a lot of profit. So now it will go to central PSUs. It, there's a very 153 deals were there out of which 44 were given to private players. And now they have cancelled it and they will reallocate it. But the simple point of the matter is that private non-profit organization, non-profit projects now give us a very good correlation that privatization is the, not the answer for everything. So very simply, private players need to now learn from this mistake because this should be done by every government. If a private player is not actually doing anything other than waiting for the project to expire, then they, it should be cancelled in that regard. So Natal has cancelled 44 hydro power projects. What is common to all of them is that all of them are given to private players. Multiple notices showed no interest. Therefore, now central PSUs will be given to it. High megawatt capacity, close to 32,000 megawatts. That's a very, very big megawatt capacity and is very important for Arunachal generally. So a very simple topic, straightforward, but is a lesson for you and me that privatization is not the answer for everything. For example, people will talk about privatization of Indian railways also now. That if a private player would have been there, this would not have happened. That is not true. America is the best example of how, how private railways doesn't work. One of the worst railways in the world because nobody really uses it to him too high a cost. Therefore, them safety also does not matter. So the answer to this question of railway safety is not privatization or removing anybody. It's about actually learning from that mistake. Okay. Now, we should be ready for something which is going to happen next year very soon which is a major river dispute, a dam dispute between Punjab and uh, Himachal Pradesh. Now, basically, there are different what are called dam projects in the Bias Basin itself. We are concerned about the Shannon one. See, this project which is here is actually in Himachal Pradesh, but is controlled by Punjab. So, this is Punjab, this is Himachal Pradesh. And very simply, the Shannon project, the dam is actually built in Himachal Pradesh, but is controlled by the Punjab government. So Punjab and Himachal Pradesh are ready to face off because this project was developed by the British. And basically, it was this 110 megawatt Shannon project, dam project, was actually envisaged in 1922. By 1932, it was commissioned and started. And the lease agreement was made in 1925. And once the lease agreement was done, it was actually given to the ruler of Mandi, Raja Joginder Singh. And it was given to the ruler of Mandi, which was at that point of time under Punjab of the colonial government, Punjab province of the colonial government. Himachal Pradesh was not there. And therefore, Punjab holds the 99 year lease which was given in 1925 to the ruler of Mandi, which used to come under Punjab province of the British government. Now that 99 year lease is getting over next year and Himachal Pradesh is very straightforward saying that we will not let Punjab government control a dam which is in our territory and they, they are using the benefits of that dam itself. So, it's a British era Shannon Heidel Power Project situated in the Jogindarnagar Mandi district of Himachal Pradesh and it is under the current control of the Punjab government. And in March of 2024, next year March, there is going to be major fireworks in that regard. The issue will become a major controversy because the Himachal government had made it clear they will not renew the lease. 
they will not give it to Punjab itself. And therefore, the Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister has very straightforward said that the 99 year lease to given to Punjab by the ruler of Mandi, who received it from the British first. So the British gave it to the ruler of Mandi and thereafter they was given to the uh, princely state of Mandi and thereafter it was given to the Punjab government after independence. The simple point of the matter is it is going to end in 2024. So, the project starts in 1922, goes, becomes commissioned in 1925, then is part of the Punjab province of the British, given to the ruler of Mandi, then given to the Punjab government by the ruler of Mandi after independence. Therefore, there's a whole changing of hands in that regard. That is why I refer to the fact that it is the ruler of Mandi which got it from the British. Now, very simply, this is going to be a very big problem very soon. So, Himachal Pradesh wants... Punjab to hand it over to them because they are the legitimate ones who should use it and legal recourse has already been taken a lot of issues will emerge very 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 soon in that regard so remember Shannon part of Himachal Pradesh given to Punjab government 99 year lease 99 year lease was given to was a British project was first given to the Raja of ruler of Mandi ruler of Mandi then handed it over to the Punjab government and therefore in turn this whole confusion because Punjab province of the British used to also include Himachal Pradesh therefore there was no Himachal Pradesh state and th in that context there is confusion in that sense so this is something which will be in the news again let's see now another railway related issue so we've done two very simple topics one the Shannon project and the other one related to Arunachal both hydro power projects now Whilst we are talking about so many things related to railway safety, there, one, there is one more issue which recently happened in March in Amritsar, but nobody has taken any recourse. Which is that if you know that trains are basically attached to each other through couplings, they are called couplings, there is magnetic coupling and there is also proper coupling. So it is a coupling like this and there is a pins which are put in. Now if the pin comes through, the locomotive magnetic but also physical coupling is there. If the coupling comes out, then the locomotive can be detached from the coaches. Now, when the train very quickly breaks, or there are, for example, cattle coming onto the, what we call as uh, the track, and there's a jolt which goes through the train because the cattle is hit by the locomotive, couplings do come out. And recently that happened. That happened in the, Shane Punjab Express in March, in which the Delner coupling, Delner coupling of the coaches came out and three coaches in Amritsar actually detached from the locomotive itself. So imagine 24 coaches are there, the jolt went through and three random coaches are now on the track and moving on its own. The train has gone forward. Now this is very, very dangerous. This is very, very dangerous. And the people were able to actually stop the coaches and get out. However, however, nobody was injured, but there was a very important MOU and what we call as SOP, which was actually pushed by the government of India. That they need to make sure that this faulty Delner coupling is changed. However, as we know as of right now, the general managers and the zonal were said that there needs to be a rectified coupling, one more additional coupling to make sure that that does not happen, but nothing has been put through. So now there's another issue which has come into the picture and this only shows laxity because this is also dangerous. As of right now, bridges are collapsing on their own had happened in the Bhagalpur district itself. This is also not very good because once we leave a random three coaches, five coaches on the track, th that could also lead to collision. So very cheap couplings are there. Have to just make sure that the make is right and need additional couplings. That's it. So this is dangerous. And as you know, because the whole train works on pressure. So when you actually use the what we call emergency brakes or the chain when you pull the chain pull goes through pressure towards the locomotive now if there is no coupling there is no attachment you cannot even stop the coaches 
so the problem is that the air brakes are based on pressure which is created in the locomotive in the engine and if that pressure goes away you can't even stop it so this again shows another issue which we need to make sure and have to make sure that doesn't happen again with this we move to the last very interesting word which was there in the what we call as newspaper evapotranspiration very interesting word is a science based thing you can expect it in prelims examination what is evapotranspiration now see it's an amalgamation of two words evaporation and transpiration evaporation we mean we know is that when soil or any surface loses moisture evaporation causes cooling so that is the evaporation surface based what we call as evaporation of water through heat where liquid turns into gas and transpiration is very specific to plants wherein the plant loses moisture because of being exposed to the environment so transpiration accommodates the movement of water through plants and loss to the parts which are in the air so the roots take up water and the leaves lose lose moisture through the atmosphere now what is evapotranspiration evapotranspiration is both it is considered the first stage of the water cycle as it is we have a water cycle that water evaporates then it condenses in the air becomes clouds and then it comes down in the form of rainfall then it goes into the soil the soil leads to two things first creating aquifers or water bodies and plants taking it through their roots they through transpiration add to the humidity and this also leads to evaporation evapotranspiration therefore is the first cycle of water terrestrial surface movement into the atmosphere and therefore a number of things affect evapotranspiration which is solar radiation length of day amount of moisture temperature wind amount of water vapor which is already there basically humidity so this is not something as a news but a very important word which was there in the hindu newspaper so before i move to the main question and end this session let's try to understand what have we done today first we have discussed the balasore district odisha train incident what happened the four lines and how interlocking was the issue signaling was the issue we discussed how it could have been avoided which is for example the coverage system and we discussed the different aspect related to coverage anti collision sos this and that other than that we then moved to the second which is north korea launching satellites issue for national security across this sector itself then we move to the prelims by section and we discuss how arunachal has very simply removed leases which are there which leases or rather we could we should say allocated hydro power projects which have been now cancelled because private players did not respond to them then we move to a explosive situation which is going to happen very soon which is himachal pradesh and punjab hydro power project developed by the british then handed over to the ruler of mandi who handed over to the punjab but punjab operate something which is in himachal pradesh and that lease is coming through on 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 20 march of 2024 and something which is going to be problematic thereafter the coupling issue another safety issue in railways not a joke needs to be taken very very seriously sop is already there last but not the least evapotranspiration which is based on the first stage evaporation plus transpiration evapotranspiration so i hope all of these things are totally clear to you if they are then i'll move to the mains question yes okay so what is the kavach system discuss the salient features of the system 250 words very easy question but you need to know very simple st standard things thereafter north korea's space program has a potentiality to destabilize east asia discuss so both questions one related to gs paper 2 this is related to gs paper 3 you can attempt them interesting questions generally on the telegram channel we will have now the five questions related to the session remember 60% off close to 50000 rupees you can save on any of our programs online or offline but generally i hope that all of thing the things which have been discussed today are totally clear we need to learn from the mistake which has happened in odisha and we need to make sure that we don't allow politics to dictate what happens it is you and me who can change the world and india itself and we need to make sure that we don't do it our thoughts our prayers and we pray for everybody who has been affected by this incident with this i would like to end the session thank you so much i will see you very soon with another c cna thank you take care bye bye